Well, hi there, and welcome to our Sunday Hymn Time. Yes, here on the first Sunday of May, 2024. And uh, I'm going way back for these words. First written by Bernard of Clairvaux. Yeah, that's what they uh, called people, or how they named them way back when Bernard of Clairvaux lived. Do you know when he was born? He was born in the Kingdom of France in the year 1090. Yes, and lived until 1150. Three, he was venerated by the church as Saint Bernard. Oh, I know. Now you know where those friendly dogs get named from. Now, I don't know if Bernard of Clairvaux was a great big man who went around carrying little caskets of brandy to help people stranded in the mountains, but uh, I digress. Um, but Bernard of Clairvaux, he was a, a monk, um, kind of, well, what we call a mystic. Uh, these were very kind of strange people to, uh, to most, uh, most of us, uh, but they developed such a close relationship with God through Jesus. And uh, Bernardo Clairvaux uh, hoped that other people too would develop their own personal relationship to God through Jesus Christ. To think of Jesus as being so close to them, even as close as their next breath, now, um, music was added later by uh, John Dykes, but you know what? People have been singing these words ever since they were written all those centuries and centuries and centuries ago. Yes, they still sing this in churches to this very day. And uh, let me try it for you. And, and um, well, the, the title comes from the very first line. And as we think about that, Jesus, the very thought of thee. Does it produce some sweetness inside of you when you think about him? Well, think about that as we, uh, as we hear this song from Bernard of Clairvaux from the Kingdom of France. Jesus, the very thought of thee with sweetness fills my breast. But sweeter far thy face to see, and in thy presence rest. No voice can sing, no heart can frame, nor can the memory find a sweeter sound than Jesus name the Savior of mankind O hope of every contrite heart O joy of all the meek to those who fall how kind thou art how good to those who seek but what to those who find all ah, this nor tongue or pen can show the love of Jesus, what it is, none but his loved ones know. Jesus, our only joy, be thou, as thou our prize will be. In thee be all our glory now and through eternity. Jesus, the very thought of thee. And you know, I was thinking about it just uh, the other day and I was reading actually some words by a man named G. Campbell Morgan. Okay, he lived a long time ago from Scotland, I believe. And he talked about how when he first met Jesus, first committed his life to him, 
you know, and when you do that, you make all these promises. Oh, Lord, I'm going to do things for you. And then you suddenly realize, oh, boy. Well, as Jesus said, right, the, the, the spirit is willing, but uh, the flesh is kind of weak. And, and I was thinking of that verse where, where it says, to those who fall, how kind, how kind thou art. And uh, as I read from G. Campbell Morgan, I began to realize, yeah, that's my story too. <laughs> um, yeah, I have stumbled and bumbled my way along this Christian life. And so I, um, I very rarely, uh, in fact, uh, I, I shudder even to do it. Um, no, come to think of it, you know, I don't think I ever do it. Maybe back in my early days as a new Christian, you know, when I just thought I had all the answers to everything, uh, I might have said, yeah, you know, you follow Jesus and you can be just like me. And then I suddenly, you know, it didn't take too long before it suddenly became apparent. No, no, you, you want to be a lot better than me. Uh, so I hold up Jesus. I commend him to you. Yeah, Christ. And, you know, it was interesting because... Uh, I was looking at a couple of verses from the book of Hebrews, fascinating book, uh, by the way, and all talking about the superiority of Jesus. You'll find that word, um, you know, Jesus is better than, Jesus is superior to, all throughout uh, this letter to the Hebrews. And and uh, the author, because we don't know exactly who, who it was who wrote it, but he's quoting from Psalm 8, you know, as the psalmist is looking up into the sky and thinking, wow, who, who are we that... that the God who made all of this is even interested in us. And, and he quotes that, or she quotes that. Well, we don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews, but um, what is mankind that you're mindful of them? A son of a man that you care for him. Now, this is interesting because we have these words. Most of us think of Jesus when we hear them, but you know, they, uh, they were actually written about you and me. It says you made them a little lower than the angels. Hmm. You crown them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. The idea of, you know, God saying, hey, you have dominion over the earth. And, oh, we haven't done a really good job of that. It doesn't mean that we just use this earth for everything we can get out of it. No, we got to look after it and take care of it. But the author says here, in putting everything under them, in other words, us, God left nothing that is not subject to them. I mean, you know, we can, we can decide, hey, we can just clear-cut that whole forest if we want. We can just build on the green belt if we want. Oh, oh, but maybe we shouldn't, right? And, and so, at present, we do not see everything subject to us. You know, there are just so many things we have no control over. But we do see Jesus. And you know what? Jesus was made lower than the angels for a little while. He became one of us, didn't he? He emptied himself. But it says now he's crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. And he's in the process right now of bringing many sons and daughters to glory. And, uh, and so uh, uh, it's fitting that God... Um, that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. And is it, and the great verses here, and you'll probably want to read them uh, better than I'm reading them right now in Hebrews chapter 2, but it says both the one who makes people holy, oh yeah, he makes us holy. Now it isn't just, you know, uh, well, we think of like Saint Bernard. No, no, it isn't just the super... Uh, sort of like we're all we're all made holy by the way when we come and trust in Jesus yeah there's nobody particularly special we can all um, actually I just uh, heard uh, we do a bible study at our church and right now we're going through something from Max Licato and and Max Licato said you know in, in the one sense we think oh God only uses special people yes he does in fact you are special to him do you ever think about that you know, the same as that psalmist in Psalm 8, looking up at the sky. Well, who am I? You're, he's mindful of you, and he wants to use you too because you are special in his eyes. Yes, it's true. And, and so both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. 
He's not ashamed to call you his brother, his sister. In fact, he even said to the uh, apostles there in the upper room, I'm calling you friends now. He calls us, we become friends with Jesus, friends of God because of him. And because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he's able to help those who are being tempted. Oh, this whole life, eh? And as I think back, yeah, I've discovered, I've discovered so many times, the reason I don't hold myself up to anybody because, <laughs> uh, no, no, I have stumbled a lot. Um, and it says there, to those who fall, how kind, how kind. He has been absolutely kind to me. I have to tell you that. Um, yeah, no, when I think of Jesus, uh, I love him. I really do. And, and he has been so good to me. And I have to, I have to reciprocate that. Well, first of all, by offering him my worship and praise, and, but also, too, i got to try and be kinder to people around me because all of us are going through stuff, and, uh, and everyone needs to come to, to the place where they, too, develop this relationship with Jesus. And uh, let me see. I'll just leave you with this part here because it's, uh, it's in Hebrews uh, 3, and then also it's in Hebrews uh, 12. Uh, and other places, I think, too. But this word fix, oh, it doesn't mean Jesus is going to fix everything in your life. No, no, but we are to fix our thoughts on Jesus. He was the faithful one. He was the author of this whole faith of ours. He was the pioneer that went before us. And he's the perfecter of our faith. He's going he's gonna to make something out of us that we can't even imagine right now. Mm -hmm. So when you think about Jesus, what, what, what comes into your mind? Uh, yeah, I don't hold up followers of Jesus. We can disappoint you pretty quick. And there, and, and there are all kinds of people who have decided, well, too many hypocrites, so I'm not going to bother becoming a Christian. Don't let us keep you from coming to the only one who was perfect, the only one who who merits any sort of worship or praise, right? It's Jesus. And let him be your joy. Uh, let him be the hope of your contrite heart. And let the thought of him fill you with sweetness. Here on this brand new Sunday. Thanks for watching. God bless you.